in this video, we're going to be looking at the basics of Scratch and how to get started with a project. So when you come to scratch.mit.edu, you can either type in that URL or you can Google it and it'll come up there. You'll either be creating your account with the username, create your password, follow the steps to create your account, or you'll sign into your already created account. So once you're signed into your account, this will be the screen that you're looking at. You got a couple options to start. Right here is the create, that'll bring you right to a new project, right off the bat, nice and easy. Over here, by your username, you'll see my stuff, and that's where you'll be able to go to see the programs and games that you have already made. So once again, you still have your create up here, and there's also a new project here. Both buttons do the same thing to create a new project. So if we come in with a new project, we got a few things to look at. First off, the biggest thing to remember is name it right off the bat. We're going to name it this one Tutorial 1 because we're just looking at the basics. We'll get into some more in-depth stuff in later videos. First thing we're going to do, we're going to look at our little cat guy here. What we call him is a sprite. So see the name is currently sprite one. Same as the projects, you want to name it to keep track of everything. So we're going to name it cat. It'll change the name down here so you can follow everything going along. With the cat, we've got a few options. You can manually type in a number here to move him to a different location. You can also click and drag moving him around, which will automatically change these numbers to the location on our canvas. We've got the options to show or hide our cat, our sprite, and a size option. Most of the defaults are going to be around 100, but you can always change things around, make them a little smaller, whatever you need to do for whatever you're working on. The direction brings up this little scroll wheel. We've got three options down here. This one will rotate it in a circle, counterclockwise and clockwise. This one, notice it doesn't do anything on this side. As soon as you flip over, it flips it horizontally. So if we, uh, if we turn them all around and we want them to go back, we can click that one. He'll go back to normal. And then as soon as we start messing with these ones again, it goes back to where we're at. So we're going to just click this, keep him at the normal direction we're at. No matter what we do to this, it's not going to change anything. So we can put it back to the 90 that it was at. As long as this is clicked, it'll keep it there. So we've got our cat. He's sitting around. We're going to move him back to the middle of the screen manually by typing in 00, zero so we know that he is in the exact center. So right now the background's just white. The way to fix that the way to add a background would be to come over here to the backdrops. Down here at the bottom, choose a backdrop. You can click that. It'll bring up the big list. Same option right above here. You can paint your own background. You can click this surprise button, which will bring up a random background. Or you can upload your own from your computer. What we're going to do is we're going to click surprise and see what we get. We got this nice little garden for our cat to be in. So again, we've got our cat in the middle. We want to be able to do something with him. So we're going to click on our sprite down here. And with our sprite, we can do different things. So we're going to start over here in the code tab. We've got a lot of different options to look at. We will look at all of them, and we'll go over all of them. To start, we're going to look at an event, because we need an event to happen for us to start doing something. So if we look here, we've got when the start flag is clicked, which is right up here. You've got your start and stop. we got when this is for space key. But if we drag that over, we see that we've got a drop down arrow. And we've got just about anything on our keyboard. So for right now, we're going to want to use our arrow keys to make him move around the screen. So we're going to start off with simple right. So now we've got 
when the right arrow key is pressed, we've got this little puzzle piece that we'll be able to add more blocks to to make it do other things. So since we want to make it move, we're going to go to the Motion tab. Right here, we've got Move 10 Steps. If we put drag that on over, now we've got when right arrow key is pressed, we're going to move 10 steps. Now, we don't know what direction that's going to do. All it's saying is it's going to move 10 steps in a direction. So if we click it, we see our cat is moving to the right with each click that we put. He moves 10 steps. If we changed it to negative 10, clicking the same button moves him back to the left. Now what about up and down? There's no other options here. So what we're going to want to do is come over here again, and we're going to find the change x and change y variables. We're going to drag one of each of them in here. The change x is going to do just about the same thing as the move 10 steps. The only difference is it's a lot clearer to you that you are moving in the x direction by positive 10 steps or negative 10 steps. And then the y is how you'll be able to go up or down, depending on if it's positive or negative. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to delete him. So when the right arrow is pressed, we're going to change x by 10. So now we see there he goes to the right. So now we're going to want to come back to our events, grab another one. We're going to do the up arrow for this one. Oh, we've got a set y. We don't want a set y. So if we come back to our motion, we're going to get change y so that it just moves steadily instead of moving directly to that location of y. So the up arrow, changing y by 10. Let's see if positive direction goes up. Yes, it does. So we've got changing x and changing y by 10 going up and to the right right now. But now we can't get back down. So a quicker step we could do, since we want to go the opposite direction of x, all we need to do is Copy, Control C after we click on this, Control C, click off the screen, Control V, and we have got ourselves another one. So we can now come in here, change this to the left arrow. Remember, this is going in the positive x direction. We need to go to the negative, so we're just going to change it to negative 10. And we'll do the same thing with the up arrow. Copy and paste, change it to the down arrow, and again, we want to go down, so negative 10. So now, if we come over here to our arrow keys, we should be able to move our cat in all the directions, depending on what arrow keys we press. So now, if you notice, right up here, we've, the, the, the colors are dimmer. Nothing is lit up. But every time we click a button, we get a flash. It starts and stops the program very quickly. So... If you're typing things or doing anything else, pushing the arrow keys, it's going to be doing it in this code. So, in that, with that, what we're going to want to do is make it so that nothing will happen until we want it to. Until we press go and we want our program to start. So once again... We're going to come to here, and we're going to say when our flag is clicked, when the start flag is clicked. Nothing will happen until we click this. Okay, so now that we have our flag clicked here, notice we can't add when an arrow key is pressed there. This doesn't allow for that. you got to find the pieces that fit like a puzzle. We can put that there. When we click that, it's going to move them by x. That doesn't really do much for us. So what we're going to do, we're going to find a condition. So we're going to come down to control. If you look, we've got options to wait, so it will pause before it does anything, repeat a certain number of times. We'll get into those later. Right now we're going to grab the if-then block. So notice that'll click in there. So now we want to look at what key we're pressing. So that's going to be in the sensing tab. We are sensing 
what we're doing. So if you look right here, when a key is pressed, so it's going to look, is this key pressed? We're going to look, so we put that right in here. Notice how it, these blocks fit very nicely in there. It's a lot, makes it easy to tell what blocks can go where and what blocks shouldn't and can't work together. So once again, we can come here and we can grab our right arrow. So we're looking at, after we click the start, if the right arrow key is pressed, then what are we going to want to do? Well, that's as simple as where we were over here. Right arrow key pressed, change X by 10. And now, if we click the right arrow right now, notice it's not doing anything. If we click the start button, notice it's still not doing anything. So what we need to do is, this is looking at when we click the button, so if the right arrow key is pressed when we push that button, then it'll move X by 10, and it stops. It doesn't check anymore. So what we need to do is come back to Control, and we need to make it repeat. And we may need to make it keep looking at this to always check to see if we're pressing the right key. So we're going to hit this block forever. We're going to put it above there. Notice how the if statement jumps right in there. So now, when we click the flag forever, it will be checking if the right arrow key is pressed, then it'll change X by 10. So it will always go through here until the program ends, until you hit stop or something else stops it. So now we're going to click go. Notice these two are bolder now. So it is running. If we click the right arrow, he moves to the right. He moves to the right pretty good. The left up and down still work because they are over there on the left, but we're going to get them moved into here right now. So we're going to stop this. So we're not going to have any of these be used. We're going to keep these around because you know, we know we're going to need to put them in there for each different error. For now, we're going to get rid of these. So right now we're looking at if the arrow key is pressed, then it changes it. But then what? Then it stops. We need the other ones. So what we can do is add another if and go right under it. So we'll check if that's there. If it's not the right arrow key pressed, it'll move on down to this one. So once again, we're going to come over to our sensing. We're going to grab what key is pressed. We're going to sense the left arrow key. So if the left arrow key is pressed, then we want to change X by negative 10. We do that two more times. We need two more of them. And we need two more key senses. We want this one to be for the up, this one for the down. And we still have our changing Y. Remember, going up is positive, going down is negative. So we can put them, these puzzle pieces, into their spots. And now, with the program not running, our arrow keys, if we push the arrow keys, they don't do anything. If we push start, again, bold, showing that we're running, highlighted, that it's always checking. And now, we can run around like crazy. So that's going to be it for this video. We looked at how to make our sprite move around, how to add sprites, choosing different ones, choosing different backgrounds, and making arrow keys or WASD move your sprite around the screen.